Hi guys, it's Yvonne from Ginger Tick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, Trash to Treasure, 13 Adventures to Fit into Farmhouse Decor, and Furniture Flips with my husband, Chris. So in today's video, I am participating in Stash or Trash Your Treasure, hosted by Mom of Mom Does Live Handmade. And of Lori of Lori Bly DIY. And if you're visiting my channel from one of these two ladies, please give me a shout out and let me know whose channel you came over to my channel from. And if you're from my channel and visiting their channels for the first time, let them know that you came over from my channel. And don't forget to um, watch a few of their videos, if not all of them. And there will be a playlist uh, listed in the description below. I really love participating in these types of challenges. So in today's video, I am doing a stash your trash treasure because I had a load of popcorn tins. tins that I needed to get spray painted and get stenciled and I have um, a little bit of a hoard and I had been asked before to show video of how I do these kind of tins so I thought this was a perfect time. This is what today's video is is how I paint up um, tins that I thrift and fit them into the farmhouse decor. So here's what some of the popcorn tins look like. And here was a very um, beat up cookie jar that was tin. So of course the first thing you have to do is remove all the labels and these are a little bit more sticky. So I just soak them in a very hot water with some Dawn dish soap and some Murphy's oil soap and then let them sit. And then I just kind of um, nudge them off using a razor blade. So be car careful if you choose to do it like this. And then you want to make sure that they're thoroughly rinsed off, that there's no residue from cleaning them left behind, and let them thoroughly dry before you start to spray paint them. Now I undercoat them using a black spray paint flat primer and paint in one. And the black fur on this product just helps so you don't see, there's always a detail on the outside of these cans. And then if you try to spray paint the white first, all you would just be having to keep going over and over to cover what the decal or the picture was on the cans. So now this is what they look like when they're all spray painted and I do spray paint the lids also. And then the black usually takes about two coats to cover. And so then I let this dry completely overnight or at least, you know, 12, 24 hours um, to make sure that it's good and dry. And then the next day I move on to my paint and primer all in one of the flat white. Now when I'm painting the white, I want to do very thin coats and I'll do multiple coats. I can't tell you that it takes two, three, four, um, just so it covers because since it is tin, it's not getting, the paint doesn't get soaked into anything. That's why I let the black dry overnight. And so with the white, the same thing, you don't want to overspray it because there's nothing for the paint to absorb in. So you're just kind of painting and letting it dry and then painting because it's adhering into the dry paint. So it's better to give a lot of multiple coats with the spray paint than it is to try to glob it on and overspray and then you'll have drips which will not look pretty and it's not very easy to sand any drips off of a tin item. So as you see I'm not trying to cover them the first couple times that I spray paint. I just keep going back and adding paint as it dries. Because since it's flat, flat white is really or even the black is easy to tell when it's dry because it's not shiny anymore. So that's a very easy way to tell. And a lot of times um, I, when I have the garage doors open, when I'm spray painting, I will put a fan on them and that'll help them dry when I'm trying to get a project done. So here's what they look like um, when I feel as if they have enough coats on them to cover. And then I usually let them sit for a couple days before I do any kind of stenciling on them. Like I said before, they are tin, so I'm going to be doing a contact paper stencil on them. So I don't want that to be not dry completely all the way through and sealed that it will pull the paint off of the tin. 
So I have multiple of these tins that I have stored up that I needed to get stenciled. So you know, if, as any project goes, the hardest part is coming up with the idea. So after a lot of research on Pinterest and looking through my silhouette library in the design studio to see what was available, I came up with some of these designs. So what I do is I put a little post-it, as you saw, on them so I know what each item is getting as its stencil and then also what size it needs to be when I go to my stencil to cut it out. So if you've seen some of my past videos where I use the contact paper, I, I like it because it's cost efficient, but it's very hard to see, especially on these cans. So that's where I'm showing you how I use a Sharpie over them. So I have a guide for my transfer tape. So I'm sorry, I was trying to find a good angle of showing you how I try to find sender on a round object because there is a seam on the back of these cans, these tins. And so I'm just, um, showing you my transfer tape where I have it on. See, that's where you can see the image using the contact paper with that Sharpie so well. And so now I'm just trying to center it, trying not to hear it yet because I want to make sure that it's centered before I push it down. So now you can adhere it to the can and I just use a old um, gift card. And of course it's a Goodwill because I'm a thrifter and I love my friends that give me Goodwill cards. So now I'm removing the transfer tape from the contact paper to leave the contact paper stencil behind on the tin. And I just kind of separate using a pin. I like the boutonniere pins. And so I'm just gingerly rolling it off and then making sure that my little um, pieces are staying down. And so this is kind of, you know, one of those patient, be patient kind of processes. Now I'll show you one of the flatter surfaces, a little bit easier to um, find center on this one and um, measure, you know, the flat is definitely a lot easier than the round. And then I'm just making sure that it's center. And then when I have it center, rubbing it on to adhere the contact paper. And then I have to peel off the transfer tape very gingerly, remembering to um, keep all the little pieces behind and then um, making sure after I move the transfer tape that I rub it down to make sure that it is all adhered. So then I move on to my next square box and here you can see where I know what stencil I'm using on this box and what size I needed to cut it out on my um, silhouette. And like I said, the square is a little bit easier than the round. And then once you're for sure you have center, you can rub it on to the, make sure the contact paper is adhered to the tin. Then after you get it adhered, then you just remove your um, transfer tape, leaving the contact paper behind and make sure that you're watching your little small pieces. So now here's one that I'm weeding the letters out of the contact paper. As you see, you can't really see them at all. So now I'll show you how I add the Sharpie to it. So now I'll put my transfer tape on. That way, with the lines of the transfer tape, I can really see where the contact paper is. And then I just remove it from the back. Here's where you see that the tin cans have a back with a seam on them. And then I just wanted to make a quick note for the round cans that I did um, kind of try to center it with the lid on. So I made sure that when I was putting the lid on, I wasn't covering up anything. So here's the grouping that I'm working on. I have them all stenciled and ready to paint. So I'm using my Apple Barrel black paint that I get at Walmart. So I'm doing the dabbing technique where I just put a little, um, paint on the little makeup sponge that I get from the Dollar Tree and then I kind of dab it off so it's kind of dry but wet and then I just kind of dab and then go around the stencil for coverage and I usually go over it twice. Now I'll do the same technique on every one of the tins that I'm painting. So here they are all painted up.
So now I know you're gonna think I'm a little weird, but with a lot of trial and error of me painting tins to resell like this, I have learned that if I heat the contact paper up on a medium heat with a blow dryer, that it does not peel off the paint with it. And yes, I do it for every one of the tins. I don't want to have to waste my time with the accidentally peeling off the paint that I waited so many days to get to stencil. So now I let them, the paint that I painted the stencil with sit overnight before I go to distress and sand so they don't look like they've just been paint added. I like to make them look a little bit distressed and a little bit older. And the nice thing about distressing them, as you see, I use a steel wool over the lettering. Anything stronger than that would take it all the way back down to the metal. And there is, you know, you did get a little bit of bleed through. It's hard to be completely perfect. So the nice thing about distressing it, it just makes it look like it was supposed to be that way. Because back in the day, they would have printed it on, not hand stenciled it like we're doing here. But it is nice because then it... Um, sometimes when you didn't have a little bleed over spot that you can just sand that a little bit more with the steel wool. And like I said, I'd only ever recommend steel wool on top of it. I do take a little old 220 on the edges and the bottom to make it a little look a little bit more overly distressed. But more than that, um, as you see right here, I'm just taking the old sandpaper just, you know, to give it a little bit of age look. And then I don't want to forget to um, about the lids for each of these pieces too. I just take that old 220 sandpaper and this is, you know, it's not completely um, rough anymore, but it just, it'll quickly take that right down to the metal to give it a little bit more distressed look so the piece all ties together. And then I do take the steel wool over all the entire pieces, over all the white because spray paint does leave like a little bit of a texture on. So that's what I'm just showing you here, how I just take it over because I don't seal these in with anything. All this paint is permanent that I've used, but it just gives it that nice smooth finish um, because like I said, spray paint does leave a little bit of a texture and then I just wipe it off afterward. So here's all the tins that I worked on today and I'm pretty happy with most of them. Yes, they're not, they're perfectly imperfect in one way or another, but I really like how the finished product turned out. So I hope I answered people's questions on how I paint up my tins. It is not an easy product project and it's not a quick project, but it's a very satisfying project and I'm always happy with how they turned out and I sell them pretty well in my booth. So I hope I have inspired you in any way that if you have any tins that you have at home that you thought, well, I can get those out of the closet. I've been storing stuff in them, but maybe I can make them pretty and leave them out in my decor and fit them into whatever your taste is. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that you click on the playlist below and watch Mom and Lori's what they did with their trash to treasure or stash to treasure or whichever one they chose to do. So I thank you so much for watching.